A device driver is a piece of software that sits between the operating system and a piece of hardware. In this episode, we'll break them down and why they're important. Welcome to Copec Explain Software, the podcast where we make computing intelligible. All right, Dave, we're going to talk all about drivers today. So what is a device driver? A device driver is a piece of software that sits between the operating system and a hardware device. Its purpose is to facilitate communication both ways. For example, you might have a digital camera. Your operating system at some point might want to say to the camera, hey, uh, do you have any pictures available? And when it requests those pictures, the camera might want to say back to the operating system, here's the pictures. Well, the camera speaks a particular language, so to speak. It has particular commands that it expects for both making those requests and also for transmitting those images back to the operating system. The device driver understands that language. It understands how to communicate both ways with a hardware device. All of that intelligence has to be encoded somewhere in software. And so we have one device driver for all of the different hardware devices that are hooked up to the computer. So device drivers are pretty necessary for a computer to function. Yes, absolutely. So these are very low-level interfaces. Right. And the people who develop them are really low-level programmers. They understand how devices work at the bit level. Oftentimes, they're working in low-level programming languages like C or C++, And they're working with particular interfaces that have been developed at the operating system level for those device drivers plugging into the rest of the operating system. So they have to actually understand two different things. They have to understand how the devices work at a hardware level. And then they also need to understand how the operating system works at a low level as well. Can you talk to us a little bit about the kernel versus the user mode? So some device drivers are built right into the core of an operating system. The core of an operating system is known as its kernel. And some operating systems support device drivers that are actually sitting almost at the same level as a standard application. So as something like a web browser or word processor. There are benefits to both kinds. The benefits of device drivers that are at the kernel level is they might have slightly faster performance because there's less of a communication overhead between the device driver and the rest of the operating system. And it also usually means that the device driver is gonna come built into the operating system. Although of course, user mode drivers could also be bundled with the distribution of the operating system. However, the big downside is if a device driver is in the kernel and it fails, it has a bug in it or something goes wrong, it's possible it could take down the entire operating system, take down the whole computer. Whereas if a device driver is user mode, the benefit is that it's isolated from the core of the operating system. And therefore, if something goes wrong, it's not necessarily going to crash the entire system. What's a generic driver? So there are some whole classes of hardware that we can cover with a single type of driver. Let me give you an example. A lot of USB mice are basically the same thing. They have two buttons, they have a little scroll wheel, and they have some way of indicating how they've slid across the surface. So we can usually have a single generic USB mouse driver that'll work with almost any USB mouse without it needing to be specific to just one manufacturer. So whether you have a Logitech mouse or you have a mouse designed by a no-name company, that all those mice might work with one generic USB mouse driver. Now, if you have some special features that are particular to your hardware device, then those features might not be supported by a generic driver. For example, maybe you have a Logitech mouse that has some additional buttons on the sides that have special functions. The generic mouse driver is not going to know anything about those special buttons. So in that case, Logitech would have to go and develop a specialized driver that you as a user generally would have to install yourself. You might need to download it from their website. It might come with some kind of media that came with the mouse, or it might be that your operating system is smart enough that it knows to automatically go and retrieve that driver when you plug in the mouse. But it's often gonna need to be a separate driver than a generic driver if there's anything special about the mouse. 
So a lot of devices can actually be covered by generic drivers and operating systems like Windows, Mac OS, or Linux are gonna come with a lot of generic drivers built in and they're even in modern distributions gonna come with a lot of specialized drivers built in. But they're not gonna have a driver for every single possible device and the generic drivers are not gonna cover every single possible device. So this is why we sometimes have to go through the song and dance of going to a manufacturer's website and downloading a specialized driver. And there are often different drivers for different operating systems. That's right. So the three major operating systems, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, all have different ways of programming device drivers. So you can't just take a device driver from Windows and simply go as a software developer and easily recompile it for Mac OS. You really need to go write it again from scratch. So this is actually a big burden on hardware companies. They need to go and maintain these drivers not just for the three different operating systems, but also often for many different versions of the three major operating systems. Sometimes the interfaces for these device drivers even change. For example, if you have an old device, let's say one that you were using back in the 90s or early 00s, it would have had a device driver for something like Windows 98 and maybe Windows XP. Those device drivers might not necessarily work anymore under Windows 10. So now if the device manufacturer did not go and make a new device driver for Windows 10 for that device, you may be unable to use that device with a modern version of Windows. So device drivers are actually a bottleneck that sometimes make a device inoperable over time because they don't get updated or new ones don't come out because there's no incentive for the hardware company to keep updating it usually after a long period of time. They actually rather, frankly, that you just go and buy a new hardware device that has better support with more modern drivers. There are some types of drivers that just get ported a whole lot. Is that right? Yes. And there's also sometimes open source drivers now, especially in the Linux world. A lot of device drivers are open source. Linux itself, the Linux kernel, comes with a lot of device support built in. And most major distributions of Linux come with a lot of other drivers as well that are beyond just kernel mode drivers. So your standard Linux distribution comes with support for a whole host of hardware. And a lot of those drivers are open source. One controversy in the Linux world is about open source versus proprietary drivers. There are some distributions of Linux that try to stay truly pure, and so they don't include any proprietary drivers. They only include open source drivers. But that generally means that they won't work with all kinds of hardware, because some device manufacturers don't release open source versions of their drivers. The open source drivers for a lot of important devices, such as graphics cards, have been getting better over the years, but they're not always as good as the proprietary versions. As an everyday user of a computer, what do you think is important for us to know about device drivers? Device drivers are what enable your computer to communicate with its hardware peripherals and even some really core hardware that's built into the system. Your computer can't work without device drivers. And you need to actually install them when you're using any kind of hardware that your operating system doesn't come with built-in support for. It's also true that device drivers need to regularly be updated by the original hardware manufacturers to stay up to date with more recent versions of the operating systems. Therefore, it's possible that your device will actually become stranded if your original hardware manufacturer does not continue to update the drivers and no open source drivers exist. So those software updates we often get alerts about are pretty important. Yeah, we do often get alerts about updates to drivers as part of our standard Windows system to a lesser extent on Mac OS or on Linux. And those updates often include security vulnerability fixes, bug fixes, and yes, sometimes compatibility fixes as well. We're still in a much better world than we were in the old days of Windows when there would often be conflicts between varying devices and their, and their respective drivers. Today, drivers are much more isolated and much less likely to cause actual conflicts on your system. Another thing that people might be interested to know is that there's a whole other layer of software that's even lower level than the device drivers that involves the hardware, and that's what's called firmware. Firmware sits on the devices themselves. It might control microcontrollers that are on the devices, 
So you can think about it as your, de your hardware devices actually having their whole own mini computers on them running their own software. That firmware is separate from the device driver. So the firmware is actually on the actual hardware device. It's not part of the operating system. And if you remove, let's say, let's say you have firmware on a graphics card and you take the graphics card out of your computer and put it in another computer, if you've updated the firmware on it, because that was its own memory, its own little microcontroller on the graphics card, that all maintains when you take it out and put it in another machine. So firmware is a whole separate layer from device drivers. Device drivers are associated with the operating system Firmware is associated with the device itself. And unfortunately, both device drivers and firmware occasionally need software updates to fix bug security vulnerabilities or improve compatibility. How would someone know if there's an issue with a driver? That's a great question because these kind of issues can often be very, very serious. I'll give you an example. There have been historically errors sometimes in hard disk drivers, so drivers that literally control the storage on your computer that have led to bad sectors being written or data being lost. What can be more serious than that? Unfortunately, when there are errors in device drivers, they often are very serious errors. So these are some of, we hope, the most tested software that gets onto our machines. But if you have an error in your device driver, the first thing I would probably do is look to see if there's a newer version. Another thing to consider is that sometimes you actually have more than one option in terms of driver. For example, I mentioned earlier the idea of generic drivers. A lot of your hardware can work with generic drivers built into your operating system, but oftentimes an alternative is that there will also be a proprietary driver that's available from the device manufacturer. Let me give you a specific example. I have a printer from Brother that has built-in support in Mac OS for printing to it due to a generic driver. However, that built-in driver doesn't support all of the different features of the printer, such as some quality options. So what I've done is I've gone and I've installed, once I noticed that, a proprietary driver from Brother from their website that added that additional functionality. So sometimes you might not even realize that you're not even using the best possible driver for the hardware that you have. And it's worth checking if you're seeing like, hey, how come I can't do this? I thought this device was supposed to be able to do this, whether or not a proprietary driver exists. But to answer your question, it can sometimes be hard to tell whether a bug is coming from a driver or if it's coming from a higher level in the software stack. But because when there are bugs, though, in device drivers, they can be very serious. How can I tell what drivers are installed on my computer? All three of the major operating systems have tools for doing this. I'll mention, since most of our listeners are probably on Windows or the Mac, I'll mention the two tools for those operating systems. On the Mac, you can go to the Apple menu, then go to About This Mac, then go to System Report, and within there, you'll see all of the hardware connected to your computer, and you can click on the different pieces of hardware and see what driver is connected to them. On the PC, if you go into the start menu and you go to run and you type device manager, device manager contains a tree-like structure that shows you all the devices connected to your machine. And if you drill down, you can see what drivers are associated with those devices. Also, when you plug in a new device on either system, you'll often get a pop-up that asks you about the device and whether or not you want to install the device driver. Sometimes it will install the device driver automatically for you, but just pay attention to the pop-ups you see when you first plug in a new device. Well, I think that's all for drivers today. All right. Thanks for listening to us this week. Rebecca, how can people get in touch with us on Twitter? We're at Copec Explains, K-O-P-E-C-E-X-P-L-A-I-N-S. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next week. Bye.